a woman who is lighting the fire, the world on fire with her passion for innovation, for helping other people, for Bitcoin, for development. This is a beautiful Marina Spindler of Spindler Edge. She's a consultant. She's working on Bitcoin uh, job training in El Salvador with her company Toragos. And she's got a research, a global research report on women and financial independence. And she just taught me something new about going on uh, before I go do a big event that I should be yawning. <laughs> Welcome, Marina. Thank you so much for coming on the Bitcoin Peace and Music podcast. Thank you so much for the invitation. This is a really big day because actually today we launched Toro Goes tonight. So okay, let's hear it. What's Toro Goes? Let's hear it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Congratulations. Yep. You know, it's Prince's birthday, right? Oh, cool. I'm Prince is my, <laughs> and it's my son's birthday too. <laughs> oh. So this is a great fortuitous day. So let's fortuitous, hear about the project. Definitely. So um, I am a consultant, as I mentioned, and a couple of the companies that I've worked with is uh, Chain Code Labs, okay. uh, Ava Labs, and IOV Labs. Coincidence, they're all labs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, but uh, basically through my project with Chain Code Labs, uh, the a requirement or ask that I was made was please help us think about how to develop and find uh, Bitcoin talent in emerging markets, right? So go talk to the people in all sorts of countries uh, and see how we can invite people to work on open source, care about Bitcoin, build on top and create products and projects with Bitcoin and Lightning. Uh, and so with this project, um, or, or task, I spoke to more than 35 Bitcoin communities around the world. Wow. Uh, from Botswana to Pakistan, Cuba, Brazil, uh, you name it. And the goal was just, hey, you know, we want to let you know that Chain Code Labs has this program. It's open source. It's free. It's a really good program. Some of the most uh, highly um, successful developers have come out of this program that have taken this program and you don't have to pay for it it's really well done it's highly curated and through those conversations we also tried to figure out if there were any uh, local or homegrown interest in building programs like this but in their home countries right and so through that we identified four or five projects that wanted or countries that wanted to do something like this and among them was this group in El Salvador uh, and I think this this was particularly important for me because a I grew up in South America so Spanish I speak Spanish I'm very close to the community B if El Salvador is going through this huge huge change uh, it is our responsibility to make sure that we're not just throwing Bitcoin at the country that we're actually, building and helping create talent and opportunities for the country so mm -hmm. that it's not a government or outsider gringo crazy idea that it feels like you understand the values and why, for example, you and I went down the rabbit hole. So if we can make it a reality, uh, then it really makes sense. So that's where uh, I approached a few people that were local. They were Bitcoiners before the law. Uh, and we talked about building something unique for the country. Uh, and what was really interesting is a lot of people those told us, well, there's no talent. There's no people. Nobody really wants to learn. They like their old jobs. They're not going to switch. Uh, or the developers aren't that great. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that we'll be finding out a lot of things as the program goes along. Uh, but so far, we identified 84 people and this is crazy, big, huge, amazing, 84 people who wanted to go through this program. Wow. And be, there's a three phase. So, you know, we first do some like basic training, understanding, basic training and understanding on Bitcoin, then lightning. And then we move on to the job training fellowship, which would be potentially probably full time. Um, we will, we will see once we know what the students components and strengths are. Uh, but basically, that's the goal to help them get jobs in Bitcoin and Lightning after a, a, a six month period. So that's the goal. Right now, we did proof of talent. We found 84 proof amazing candidates. Love it. <laughs> and then now we're going to the proof of work. 
are you going to do the homework? Are you going to do the readings? Are you going to set up your node? You know, all these things that require for you to actually understand and engage with Bitcoin and Lightning for a job or for a future in the space. And that's how we're uh, designing it. And it launches today. So it's very exciting. Oh my gosh. I, when we were going back and forth, I didn't realize today was your launch. So wow. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for, for meeting with me today. I bet you're busy. So thanks we for are. taking time to, <laughs> to do this. So I, I'll, I'll, you know, if you have a time constraint, I know I, I, we didn't talk about that before. Just tell me to shut up. And cause I could talk, <laughs> like I said before, I'm like, I could go down all of these threads of your, your history and your, I mean, you have really you are remarkable. Like I'm just, you know, the, the, who, who rules the world it's Marina <laughs> and, and yeah. your passion for, for helping people and, and bringing projects to life. I mean, how did you get involved with becoming, you know, a consultant and into business development and certainly focusing on, um, uh, you know, developing economies and women? Well, I've always been in developing economies. I was born in the U.S. but grew up abroad. So I think this uh, idea or understanding of how money is very different in different countries was very clear to me from very young. Like I remember traveling to Argentina and one day my father could change money and the next day he couldn't and going to the black market and trying to like exchange the dollars for the pesos, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, the devaluation in Mexico. So I I've seen a lot of these circumstances where money isn't um, this straightforward thing that it is for us in the United States, for example. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I think in the US, it's more like about libertarian values that I own my money and I own my rights versus in emerging markets. We just need that freedom. Like we, don't, you know, volatility is nothing. Our entire lives are volatile. Therefore, Bitcoin is the least volatile of anything, uh, right? At least wow. it's the freedom is completely different and your perspective of that. Um, so growing up abroad and then coming back for college and, and staying here for work uh, is, I think, what has always put me, I, I say, like, not even from, I'm not from here or there. Like, if you ask me where I'm from, it's difficult to, to answer that. But also it means I've been an ambassador of, of both sides, if you will, you know, always trying to have that empathy of understanding where the other person is coming from. Yeah. And so I studied public policy in Washington, D.C., and I went to work for the Embassy of Mexico. Then I went to work for the Carnegie Endowment, which you mentioned in the launch. The Carnegie is one of the oldest and most pre prestigious think tanks in the world, uh, in the United States, definitely. And uh, there, I, my boss was the editor of Foreign Policy magazine, and he was also the chairman of the G50, which was the top 50 corporations of Latin America. So yes, I was in a think tank, but all my bosses were CEOs. And so wow. it was a very um, corporate mentality of like uh, delivering content, very similar to what World Economic Forum does, but specifically for Latin American CEOs. And that's why we would talk about the future of money, the future of finance, the future of health. And in 2014, we did a conference specifically on the future of money where we presented Bitcoin. If you think about that, like imagine World Economic Forum presenting Bitcoin in 2014. So I think that was pretty cool. <laughs> and wow. I mean, that's kind of where I first went, understood it um, and heard about it and uh, digested it but I think I wasn't there to like actually think about buying using or anything at that point until much later uh, when I had to move for family reasons to New York and had to give up my beautiful lovely amazing job um, that I really did love uh, but also I think it's good for transition you know it's, it has it's in great hands good leadership and I went did my master's and then I became a consultant. Wow. I mean, you and you're just on fire moving forward with this mission. And and are you full time into Bitcoin now with the projects that you're choosing to consult with? Or are you still, you know, because some of your history, you've got, you know, other um, other platforms. It, tell me about your experience with with this. So I am obviously for Bitcoin first, for sure. Uh, I, I really think it's not just... I think sometimes we're chasing too many new, 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 and really not working on the, the what really are the ground 
groundbreaking or important things that we need to work on to make this successful. So at least for me, I like this area. That said, I think that what's really important is whatever is best for the people in different places. Like mm -hmm. I know amazing artists that are doing NFTs in all sorts of countries who have really changed their lives because of that. I think it's mm -hmm. fabulous. I have friends with Avalanche and other projects who are also doing very serious work and in IOV labs in Argentina. So I understand and believe that all of these projects and products are important. Uh, where I choose to spend my time, obviously, is um, equally important, but I don't think, like I, I, Maxi is, is depends on what is Maxi, right? To me, what matters is, is it helping people? Is it changing lives? If it is, then I think it's really important that we embrace it and understand that people will, will do what, what what works for them best right and and yeah definitely and i see you know obviously the the innovative space of for artists and for different people to use yes. these other platforms as they're developing do you see the future you know cuz obviously we just saw the luna collapse we're seeing solana fall apart we're seeing a lot of these um projects that unfortunately aren't as secure as bitcoin um network. And so because, you know, we have stacks that are, you know, at a, a, a layer two that can get built with, um, with smart contracts, people are doing NFTs and stuff like that using stacks. It's built on top of Bitcoin network. Do you think, do you see the future with, we're going to have a lot of different, um, players or do you really, do you see there might be like some dominoes and things are just going to move over? So because of the security um, that's inherent within Bitcoin network that people might move their projects over to, you know, say stacks for a, one example. I think Bitcoin is e evolving and emerging in a very healthy way. Uh, I think that there's other projects that will succeed as well. This is not a one, one, every one for every one. Uh, I see, I see that there's going to be a lot, a lot of players, maybe not as many as currently, I think 2000 or seven, it's not even, it's like 17,000, 17,000, 17,000. The last time I made a presentation about this, we were at 7,000. So 17,000 oh is crazy. It, uh, it, that's insane. It's impossible. It's ridiculous. It's, uh, yeah. When people ask me, how do I choose the projects I work with? It's always been the technical team. Who are the the cryptographers behind the team. And that has always been what has guided me before mainnet when you don't know what's happening, or obviously with Bitcoin, I was very clear who were the innovators. But whenever I was trying to decide on a project or um, idea that obviously had no, no point of reference, that was my only um, main question always, who is behind the technology and the innovation? How safe will they keep our data? How will, mm -hmm. will they make sure that it's online always or not? You know, that sort of thing. That was always, if you ask me how I put my dominoes or how I made these decisions, it was always based on that, the technical team. Definitely. It's, it's super important. Do you Beyond see the like, <laughs> if, there, if there was one, you know? It, yeah. It, do you see the, the functionality though, that's being developed on a lot of these other projects? Do you see that, you know, what, you know, you obviously are a consultant know way more than I do in these industries. Do you see some of those use cases getting put on top of a layer two solution or something of that nature? No, that's and not Bitcoin? necessarily. I mean, I think that the idea, yes, but I don't think they're going to be on top always, you know? No. Okay. I was just curious. Like the idea like, of lending. Lending will be in several different platforms, right? That's what I mean by the idea. And then do you think like with, with the project with um, Totogos, what are the people learning? Like what, what will they be capable of being employed to do once they're done with this, this six, six months you said they'll be doing the training? Yes. And yeah. again, this is a three stage process and, you uh -huh. know, we start with 84, but we'll probably end up with 20 or 10, who knows, depending on what, who goes through the process, who's serious, who really wants this, uh, et cetera, right? It's, it's, it's a process and it will require dedication. Yes, it's open source. Yes, it's free. 
for the person that's taking the course, but it's not free of your time. It's not free of your dedication. Yeah. Uh, and that's really important and difficult. We are trying to make it as much as possible in Spanish, the first part. Um, the second part will require English because uh, Mastering Lightning is not in Spanish just yet. And a lot of the reading is in English. Um, so to actually get a full-time job in the space, it still requires a uh, pretty decent English. And so again, I think it's, if we can get people up the ladder and improve and, and get better and you know, decide to take more coding classes or decide to take more English, that will be an inspiration to them um, and, and a launch point or a start point for some, but for others, it'll be like a really natural progression. So uh, we don't know who those will be, you never know. So I think we were trying to be very open as to who could at least take part in the first part. Uh -huh. um, and slowly it'll require more time, more reading, more de dedication. And in fact, we've been talking to Jimmy Song, who will be there at the end of mm -hmm. July or in July. And he's also giving some scholarships away for a pro project with Stacy Herbert and a few people who are sponsoring his visit. It's a two day mm -hmm. program. And so what we're going to be doing is saying to a few of our students, hey, you guys, are ready, you guys should apply for that scholarship as well. So maybe with Jimmy, they can get even stronger, better, faster yeah. at this as well. So we're trying to make sure that um, we fill a certain gap, right? There's a lot of projects that are for young people, like download a wallet and what is Bitcoin and very early things like that. But there's nothing mm -hmm. for job training or development that is very thorough, thoughtful, carefully curated. And we're doing it based on the chain code methodology, which has done very well everywhere. It's very well known. And also we are partnering uh, or, or talking to our friends at Kala, who I worked with uh, uh, on this, on a few, uh, I guess, um, you know, requirements that they had when they were launching in Africa. And so the Kala program is also an inspiration to us. They've already shared what, they, what they've been learning there, what worked, what didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also shared with us, you know, what, like the training program itself, like what they taught them. So we're going to try to make sure to include and incorporate uh, what they um, taught their uh, cohort, and also make sure that we're doing it in our in, in El Salvador, right? So I mm -hmm. think that that's really important, because, you know, a lot of people, uh, there's like uh, 50 or so companies uh, in El Salvador that are Bitcoin Lightning, and yet they're importing all these talent mm. and, and we need to, somebody has to train the, the people to be able to be hired from, for these companies. Uh, and so we're super lucky to have amazing mentors who already work in Bitcoin and Lightning, who understand why this is a priority, why El Salvador has to be a priority for the Bitcoin community and who are donating their time, you know, like. Bitcoin core developers and lightning experts at lightning labs, they're giving their time to us to help these students succeed or these this cohort succeed. So we're super fortunate, but obviously we're trying to make sure that we're putting all the all the puzzle pieces in place to to guarantee, you know, success as whatever that success uh, develops as. Wow. It, it, is the whole project volunteer based with all the, yes. the mentors? <laughs> yes. And us too. Uh, nothing is um, fi a financial remuneration at this point. Uh, wow. Once the fellowship is established, we'll try to hire a proper professor, etc. We'll try to see if some of our uh, core staff team members can also get some sort of remuneration just so that their time is uh, rewarded. But right now, I mean, this is still proof of concept, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and but what is beautiful, like this team came up with the name, and I don't know if you know, but Torogos is the national bird of El Salvador. And it's a bird that um, dies in captivity, it literally dies in captivity. So it symbolizes freedom, like Bitcoin, yeah. which is why it's such a beautiful project. And, and, um, focus and it, it kind of makes us proud and and that's why the team is so engaged and excited I mean they put in hours and hours and hours of work and translating yeah. things and you, you name it and interviewing and and putting the test together and everything like all these things to to make this happen so it's very exciting uh to see the team uh, 
be so passionate about this and then have me the the, the foreigner <laughs> be the one that's kind of just more helping like put certain pieces together like the mentors and obviously thinking about the more international approach connecting with Kala connecting with uh, Summer of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Beach and other projects that are well known internationally you know wow this is amazing i'm just i'm so inspired i'm so inspired by this entire community on all levels it's just this constant um the generosity of people's spirit and their time and their wisdom and their genius that they keep giving of themselves to each other without, you know, like, oh, I'm not going to do this unless you pay me my fee or my rate or whatever. It's like, no, we need to move this forward and then we'll figure that stuff out later because we, I think we all get it. I mean, this is a time, I think this is a time sensitive issue, you know, and I believe like, you know, just, I know you get it. Like imagine each person who's going to be trained in this and then they're going to have new opportunities. It's not just here's your new currency and have a nice day. It's like, no, I'm yeah. going to go be able to like participate in my country's development because I know how to be a Bitcoin developer. Or I know how yeah. to do these things. I mean, that's got to feel really empowering for you and the team. It's a struggle though, because remember that it's the, like time is money and yeah. not everybody has time or money. Yeah. And uh, I do on um, like, I also am doing this completely uh, without remuneration. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a struggle for a lot of people to, to do mm -hmm. that. So yes, it's important and we have to do it, but also there's a point where somehow the community, somehow the projects have to figure out a way so that it is sustainable because if not, people burn out. And so we want to be really yeah. thoughtful about where, where is it, has they, has it been too much, right? And especially in emerging markets, right? Like they are literally sometimes living, you know, day to day. Uh, and it is a privilege to have time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And do you feel like, you know, the this the value for value model that people are putting up forward with like podcasting 2.0 and like a Patreon model? Are you familiar with kind of what's going on in the content and education world with um, this value for value model? I, I think it's valuable and important. Again, I do. Uh, I When you're experimenting, you want to be there first. You want to learn first. You want to be at the, the, you know, how they say the first adopters, early adopters, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you are paving a path. You are making the mistakes that nobody else will be making. You are, do, you know, figuring out the UX, the UI, all of these things. Uh, it does take a certain personality, I think, to be able to love it and thrive in those situations. Yeah, it, it does. And I know I ran a nonprofit about a little over 20 20 some years ago. And it was just, it was, you know, all the pie in the sky. Yay. Let's go do these after school programs for kids. And we're going to teach them about music and technology and personal development. Yay. And, and it was just so difficult because exactly that point, the time is the most valuable resource that we have. And if we're all donating our time, it's like, okay, I have to make sure I'm still taking care of my health and my family and my finances, you know, yes. and even though your heart really wants to go do this big thing, you know, a lot, it, it is, it's a balancing act or a, a, a dance. Um, do you, what do you find? I, 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 there's so many projects out there and people, I bet, I mean, have you considered doing like a, a like a GoFundMe or Patreon or something where we could, all of us could donate to this, you know? Um, we are, that, we're definitely considering it uh, okay, for good. sure. But we also are very humble in the sense that we know that this project needs to show proof of work before we can start asking for money. Um, so I, so I think we're very conscious about that first. Sure. Uh, I think once we go through stage one and two, like when we're in the middle of stage two, we'll start to understand like who, who, what are we building? Who are we building it for? And what are the chances of, of, of this promise that we made of helping them get jobs? And of mm -hmm. course it's, it's a promise, right? We, we are obviously hoping that this will empower them. And also we can connect them with the mentors and people who are hiring, right? Mm -hmm. So they can see the talent um, but in the end, I think it'd be super early to be like, here's the wallet and send us money. 
uh, we want to make sure that it is a very thoughtful project and that we're clear who would be benefiting from this. So that's why we're also waiting a little bit. Uh, but the goal is, for example, from institutions, they can help us with, you know, the, the hiring of people are if we become a 501c3 or what we do that we help incorporate those sort of costs are are helped by institutions. But then if you or somebody else, a personal a person donates, then it goes directly to the student scholarship or whatever. Right. So that mm -hmm. it, it really is. Uh, a mix and that we're respecting as much as possible the smaller donations uh, so that it can be a broader base uh, support as well. No? Yeah, definitely. And so, so right now, okay, so we're on what, June 7th. So by the time the conference happens in El Salvador, then uh, end mid end of November, are you, we'll you guys right will be five fellowship. months into it, right? We're so in the middle of the fellowship. Yeah. That's exciting. So that's going to be an opportunity for you guys to shine all of your progress. And then, then you can say, all right, everybody, let's open up your <laughs> lightning wallets and start sending some sats to these kids. Like, well, heck you know, yeah. You, you but I really I, early, but yes, that's the goal. <laughs> I love your approach though. Cause I mean, I, I, circling back to the value for value model mindset, you know, and so this is like, you know, streaming sats to a podcaster or an educator or uh, yeah. any type of content creator. Like my, they just announced today, um, I think it's called Get Mash. I need to, I'm, I'm going to go. I, I literally, I, if I had 10 brains, I still couldn't keep up with everything in 10, 20. So, oh my gosh. I'm like, I want to go do this. But I've been dreaming of this dashboard where we could have all of our content, you know, whether it's a podcast or YouTube or a book or an article or your social and put it all in one easier to kind of read feed. And then at the end of each month, you, you know, let's say I have a hundred dollar, you know, content budget for the month or $10 content budget rather than, you know, Spotify taking those dollars and then maybe giving them to the artists that I listen to, we can use data and say, hey, you consumed this content, you took this course, you read these articles, et cetera, et cetera. And then I can choose who I wish to stream my sats to, you know, and then I can develop different relationships with the people that I care about and talk to them. And then they're going to create different content and I'll create different content, vice versa. So it's kind of this proof of, of, of consumption, proof of content, proof of, of delivery, like what you're saying, like your proof of work, you know, like let us do some work and then we're going to show you and ask you guys to, to help out instead of just this. Hello. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. It's, well, it's a good model. I like that mindset a lot. Even right now, for example, whether we're going to continue doing it online or become, make it like a live in-person course for the fellowship itself, we mm -hmm. haven't made that final decision because, for example, we just did a map of where all the, the, the uh, people are from and they're from all over the country, all over the country. So until wow. we really know who went through the program, we can't really make a decision about whether it's going to be an in-person program and maybe we host a couple of people here and there you know or what we can do to make it as participatory as possible um that will come along once again once we know what we're doing because we're really breaking ground like this does not exist and so it is the cool. first country in the world that in, in, <laughs> instills and or in in puts Bitcoin as a uh, 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 money in the country for the first time, right? Legal tender. And so hopefully maybe Torogos can be an example for other countries once they make this change or switch, right? This is literally where it's the Petri juice, we're the test to, you know, we're really just trying to figure it out as we go. Like I was thinking every company is a Bitcoin company there, right? They don't have a, a choice. So yeah. bankers, everybody's going to have to understand and learn what is Bitcoin, what is lightning, how does it work uh, somehow or another, right? So that means may maybe they don't want to switch jobs. Maybe they don't need to go into Galois or Bitrefill. Maybe they can stay at their bank job. So again, we really don't know yet, uh, but we do think that it is a responsibility if Bitcoin is going to succeed, that we're there training people for these jobs and not just throwing sats or like, you know, throwing conferences that you're also building the building blocks, um, which there's a lot of programs already there. Again, they're more focused on the early learnings, right? Mm -hmm. Open a wallet, 
what is Bitcoin, you know, the, the, the basics, which are super important, but they don't make you have food on the table. Right. And exactly. So that's the difference with this project, uh, or so we hope. It's so important. I mean, it, it is, again, there's so many t- tentacles and layers to this experience of Bitcoin around the world. So it's not, yay, now we've got this new currency that hopefully we all adopt. It's like, we still all need to eat. We still all need to deploy our skills in a meaningful way and, and exchange value with whoever needs them, whether you're a developer or a carpenter or a DJ or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like we still need to work on those skills as as humans, you know, and I we certainly also still need to work on our, our human skills and our mental health and our physical health and our interpersonal communications and everything. So so I think it's important that we keep the dialogues open in all of these areas and keep all of these trainings alive and supporting everybody, you know. Does President Bukele, like, does he know about your project? Like, when is he going to know about it if he doesn't already know? Because I don't know him, but I'm going to call him <laughs> so, up and be like, yo, buddy, let's go. This is good. So a, lo- a lot of been, people have been tagging him, obviously. And then there's certain people in the government and the education ministry that know about our project. Uh, Mm -hmm. We, again, are really about the education and the Bitcoin developers. Uh, We try not to be like pro one party or another. Uh, We don't, we want to make sure that we're careful that it's not seen as like a a political issue. It is definitely an education issue. And Mm -hmm. that's what we're focused on. It's an education project for something that is already law, period. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's figure out how we can make it thrive. Uh, that's what we are most important and care about. Bitcoiners want to be, you know, supportive of programs that help others succeed. And that's what we try yes. to deliver. That's what we're going to try to do, right? Um, if the president supports us, yay, great. We're very excited. But we're going to be plowing through, uh, on or working um, to help people, you know, regular people. That's our yeah. goal. Uh, that's I love it. I think that's a, a great approach. Of course, there was uh, the a film just got put on my desk yesterday, and um, it's about El Salvador. It's called Bond. I, and I'm gonna. I don't want to mess up the name, um, but they were talking about. Let's go see here. Hold on, because I'm going to be interviewing him soon, soon, soon. Satoshi Pollen. He did a movie about El Salvador and it was really good. It's like about an hour long documentary. It's called Bond to Unbind. And so he did it um, in association with um, uh, Looking Glass Education and Me Primera Bitcoin and those guys. And so it, it's a good documentary about what's going, and I'll send it to you and I'll put it in the show notes and everything. Do you know about this film? Yeah, I may have seen it. I'm not, I'm, I'm bad with names, but I may have seen it. Yes, I was looking yeah, at something. Yeah, it's really good. Well and it, I thought it was really cool because it was really talking about the, you know, the delicate nature of, of, of your of the government in El Salvador and you know I don't, I'm still learning about the history and it really went into detail about um, you know what happened and how did Bitcoin get adopted and why you know what the trials and tribulations are of it and everything but what you know they were just like if if anything the government was rolling out the people were just like it doesn't matter what it is it could be a bucket of water for my hair that's on fire if the government's giving it to me I don't trust it yeah, but and that's so, the U.S. too, right? Like it, it's, it's right anywhere. Left, it, we're like, oh my God, no. Yeah, a it, I, I, said it or a it, Democrat it, said it. Like, exactly. I, that's why I, we're trying to be more focused on education. Period. And yeah, job training. That's what I'm saying. To period. your point. Uh, yeah, to your point of focusing on, we're doing the education for Bitcoin. It doesn't matter who supports us politically. That's we I are pro Bitcoin. How's yeah. that? I love it. We're the Bitcoin party. <laughs> we like to party. <laughs> <laughs> We're Bitcoiners. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, okay, so you're obviously doing this out of the, the the kindness of your heart and the care for Bitcoin and the care for helping these folks succeed. What else What else is going on for you in your your uh, professional life? I mean, you obviously have got a great skill set. You're doing all these different things. Tell me about the the, the research report for the, the Women's Financial Independence. Thank you. So, um, before this, uh, I've all with my work at the G50, where I was working with the CEOs, there was also a huge imbalance between men, women, different countries or, or, or 
industries even at some point. And so a lot of my job was to try to make sure that we were as diverse and interesting as possible. So that the people in the conversations, the people in the meeting were people you wanted to meet and talk to, right? Mm -hmm. And so, for example, we quadrupled the amount of women in the group. We worked wow. to recruit uh, the, the new generation of CEOs. So people who are always on the plane don't have an office, but they have huge, amazing companies and projects and startups. Uh, and so what, what does that mean? Who is the talent that's coming out of the region, right? And it was a, a lot of work in the sense of um, sometimes when you are doing diversity and inclusion, uh, mm. it's really not clear. Like uh, we were having this conversation with the team just the other day. Well, we opened it up to everyone and 98 out of the 107 applicants were men. I'm like, okay, mm. so we got to go talk to the women in the university and the people in the bank and all these people and like go recruit the women and call them and tell them, hey, you should come and participate, right? And do something. At, well, but we opened it. I'm like, well, but that means we I, like, so to me, it really means like, what are you doing above and beyond to make sure that the content or, or what you are delivering is actually diverse? Mm -hmm. um, and there's this phrase, I'm sure you've heard it, you know, you know, diversity is uh, being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Right. So the <laughs> right. difference, yeah. how does that actually work? Uh, and I remember some phrases um, which were very surprising, like, well, she's not there yet. Or like, we'll meet with her and, and talk to her. Um, but they never said recruit, like, you know, with, when it came to women. And I don't again, it could be just like a, a subconscious self, like nothing really like very specific, but me being um, clearly looking to recruit dif diverse candidates, I would be like, well, I'm going to meet her and I'm going to recruit her. But it really had to be a, a self a decision that I made. If I had mm -hmm. just gone through the clues of words, I might have not like, like nobody told me go recruit her. They said, talk to her. Right. And, and it, or also even I remember with men, they'd be like, oh yeah, three, three minutes later in the conversation. Yeah, I'll join. Women, sometimes it would take me three years, like just talking to them, letting them know what we're doing. Here's the agenda. Here's the content. Here who's coming. The, and then they realized that what we were doing was super serious and amazing and thoughtful and, and really worth their time. And then they would join. So there's very different, like if you want to really be inclusive, it, it takes time to make sure that you are being that. And so when... Uh, I saw all these reports like Gemini and Coinbase, they have these reports and they're like women and cryptocurrency. And it was surveys from US, UK, and that's it, right? They spoke to 4,000 people through a survey. Very good surveys, very helpful. I'm not, I mean, amazing, but it wasn't really global. Mm. And so that was my goal. Like, well, this is a global revolution. And so I spoke with uh, 60 women from 31 countries, if I'm not mistaken. And the goal was to just ask them, you know, for one hour, like, what's your first memory of money and power? Like, why do you think you went down the rabbit hole versus your brother or your sister? And just trying to like crack that code of like, why, why are we, us, you, Valerie and I in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? How did we get through here? Why aren't other women joining? Like, what's going on, right? And so it was really interesting to try to cr crack that a little bit. And what did you so come up example, with? What? Why aren't? Why is there a, a such an imbalance of these numbers? Why are women not that excited about this this space yet? Well, we yet. take longer to process certain things. Okay. It doesn't. But for example, when we're in, it's like forget it. We're like totally brainwashed, even more lifer, than men. I know. I'm a lifer. <laughs> So, yeah, later. So I think that, for example, we, we, I was told, you know, well, it's not money yet. It's not money yet. And then I was like, well, how am I going to survey these women so that I can figure out if this is money yet or not? So we asked them, like, do you prefer to be paid in cryptocurrency, fiat? Like, what's your preference? 80% of the women we interviewed preferred cryptocurrency for sure. Wow. 80%. Given these were 60 women in the industry, right? Like we already did that. Like, um, it might have taken us three years to get in. But once we're in, you know, we're all the way gung ho, truly, 
committed, right? So, so even though it might take us longer, we are very committed once we're in, if that will be uh, a little bit of a clue. And then the other question was also, um, you know, like their savings. I think like 50% had more than 75% of their savings in cryptocurrency. Like they're nice. like super... <laughs> like I'm working uh, on this, I'm transacting in this, I'm saving yes, in this, I'm getting yes, paid in this. Like I they believe and breathe it for yeah. sure. And so those were things that were pretty indicative. Uh, even though we're few, we're very, 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 very down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I love it. I know. I feel the same way. I mean, I think my most of like my old they're still my friends and family, of course, but they think that I'm insane uh, because they don't get it yet. They haven't taken the time. They haven't had that, whatever the aha is, that's going to get them to like really get more curious about understanding, you know? And like, to your point, and in, in we here, and especially in the States, like money is money. We have the dollar. We've been thinking that we're fine, you know, and why bother learning about this? But people in other countries, like you said, like, they don't have that privilege, you know, they're, they're so unstable and it's, it, it's just, it's a whole different mindset. So I think it's going to take more time to get us here in the States, particular, you know, on board with it. But once it happens, it's just going to be like, forget it. Obviously we're, <laughs> it's, it's, it's game on. Well, but what It's definitely the learning by doing though, right? Yeah. Like just help me, like te- here's the, you know, download this wallet and let me send you some sats and like just that or, or get your own node. I think apparently the new one is women should have their own node, right? Like instead of a, your own router, your own X, you know, whatever. Now you should have your own node. Node babes. We can <laughs> yeah, be node, node babes. babes right? and so, <laughs> so it's just like actually doing it, right? And yeah. then you're like, ah, oh, I get it. I understand. I see it. Even you see the fluctuation, you go up and down, you have your first heart attacks down that, you know, the roller coaster and you're like, <gasps> oh. and then you're like okay, okay, I survived. And like, diamond hands, diamond hands. Can you, <laughs> I know, you know? I, it's, it's definitely, you know, I just started learning about Bitcoin a little over a year ago, you know, like in January of last year, because the NFTs with people and all that, I'm like, who the hell is spending $69 million on a JPEG? You know what? Okay. Color me interested. And then of course I went down the shit coin rabbit hole. And then really what got me excited about Bitcoin was when I started learning from Alex Gladstein and Ray from Paxful and really about the human rights components of why Bitcoin matters so much. And I'm just like, yes. okay, that I'm in, I'm in, I'm going to keep learning. And then it's just one of those like, okay, now I understand why this is superior. The other things are different and but this is what I want to focus my energy on because I only have so much of it you know (laughs) and I think it's just it's just such a revolution you know and you know a friend of mine last night he was telling me you know because I do personal development I do a lot of different things to try to help people create like a holistic approach to living including bitcoin you know and he was like why don't you focus on doing women's groups like women's bitcoiner groups you know and Part of me, of course, I want to do that and I want to have some special, you know, let's go do ladies night and teach with ladies about Bitcoin or just have social night that are ladies Bitcoin or, you know, Bitcoin ladies. But there's just something about that that I'm like, do you think that that's creating that separateness, you know, again, where it's kind of like you're not having the diversity because you're doing these separate women's groups? Or do you think that's just a stepping stone so that women have a safe place to come and ask questions and not feel like as intimidated as they might feel in a group with a lot of men? So I love the women's group. I love the women's group because that's where I've like, for example, women have always helped me get jobs. They are the ones that have championed me. And yes, a few men too. Let's let me be clear. But it's been in those women groups where I've been like, oh, and then they're like, you have to talk to Marina. She's really great. She's like, the, I, and that, but then there's a guy who's a great friend who we worked on some startup things with Venezuela. And he's like, Marina, you're like an orchestra conductor. You make chaos into order. It's so yeah. amazing what you do. Da, 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 da. And like he has been connecting me to um, headhunters and, and people who might get me jobs, right? And so again, it really, uh, each space is important. Like, for example, one of my favorite meetings right now are the, are the BitDevs New York. 
right? Mm -hmm. And they're the coolest, nicest, nicest people and really wicked smart. Uh, but I remember my first bit devs New York, I understood 10% of what was going on, <laughs> like 10%. And I'm like at my fifth, sixth right now. And I understand like 80, 80%. Wow. That doesn't mean I like can go dig deep and sure, like, but I, don't, that's huge. I don't understand the code, but I understand what's going on and I understand what they're talking about. I just did the chain code uh, labs, um, Bitcoin uh, developer, uh, protocol developer program. I was the only woman out of, I guess, like 40 people who went through the project, at least in my cohort. I was the only woman and they were the coolest, nicest, amazing group. I never felt like one thing is Bitcoin Twitter. Uh, another thing are the actual developers and people truly building. They're super inclusive, amazingly thoughtful, and like really want everyone to learn, right? And build and create with you. They're so excited about Torogos, very supportive. Like that's how we got a bunch of mentors, right? So, so it's been a really great journey to also get away from the twi Twitter noise versus the yeah. reality of the true builders in the space. They're so respectful, thoughtful, intelligent. They really want this, you know, want us and me and and the people in El Salvador that are taking this program to succeed. And that's yeah. what really matters. Yeah, it really does. And I feel like getting out and meeting people in person is so important. And I, you know, obviously COVID put us in positions of, you know, seclusion for a while, but this last year has been like, yay, we can get out and see each other again, at least a little bit, you know, in person. And so it does create a whole different level of relationships and comfort, you know, because whether you're, you know, on a Zoom call or a spaces or a whatever, it, there's still that disconnection of humanness, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, you know, like right now I'm like, I want to give you a high five, you know, and it's <laughs> great that we can be here. And I'm grateful that we have this gorgeous technology, but yes. it's like, it would be neat to be able to be having our, you know, you've got your coffee mug and I got my coffee <laughs> mug. We can yeah. smell each other's coffee and have fun together. <laughs> Yay. You know? And so I really, you know, even if we're shy, I'm definitely an introvert and, um, strangely enough. And I think a lot of artists and, you know, as a DJ, it's like, how could you be an introvert? You go in front of thousands of people. I'm like, because I'm behind the DJ booth and <laughs> because it's my safe space. <laughs> There's but, amazing people that are in the space, you know, like yeah. she five founder, Maggie Love. She's a DJ and she's an expert in DeFi. Really? Oh, no, no, no. I don't know women. her. Okay, hold teaching on. women about DeFi and her project is um, amazing. I went through the one of the first cohorts and I salute and congratulate her. But I've also been in spaces where like this guy was interviewing me and literally, I'm not kidding, his foot was here and this was like the CEO or something really big of this company. And he's like, um, so how degen are you? <laughs> and this is a very serious, huge company and he's has his fucking leg on, sorry for the word <laughs> leg on the on the on the chair and asking me how degen am i i'm like you're 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 hiring me for business development you're hiring me to talk to people and be with people i don't need to be on the trading 24 7 to do my job my job is different for the degens you need a different person you're right but like how so in any case, there's, there's been some some pretty funny things happening, but then there's also really amazing people like Maggie and and Metagama Delta and 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 other projects that I've been a part of. So it's really important um, that that we're really thoughtful and open minded and just focus on who is serious and who is like actually producing valuable content. Um, that's that's what I care about. And and what do you do you see any gaps out there cuz obviously you know I'm very humble about my newness and I'm just a pleb and I'm trying to learn and 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 you know reach an audience that may not necessarily get this you know I'm certainly not a Jimmy Song or Matt O'Dell or somebody who's a genius and knows how to do all this stuff right but I do feel like until we do have this hyper Bitcoinization. It's like we need more voices out there speaking to our respective audiences in in the language that they understand, you know, and then hopefully, you know, guiding folks to just get curious about Bitcoin and money and what does it mean for them? You know, what do you 
what do you see as like a, a possibly a gap and that how can we help fill that as content creators and as some you know people who are out there who wish to make you know valuable content for people so a i think there's so much out there and it's really hard to be a con like the curation of the content so yeah. what i really value are people who can curate content very thoughtfully right mm -hmm. so it took me forever going to so many meetups to try and figure out like which ones are the good ones, right? And where are the serious people? Because they all sound the same on the meetup or on the event, right? Like you it just like Bitcoin or blockchain or cryptocurrency. Uh, but until you start realizing like who set it up, what's going on, it's very difficult to know if you're joining a scam or if you're joining something serious. At the beginning, yeah. it can be very tough. Uh, through Chain Code, for example, we also identified that there's specifically that um, the funnel problem, right? There's the, a lot of like, you know, how to download a wallet, what is Bitcoin? Like, what does it do? And very basic things, but then it's technical and you have to have a PhD, right? So right. where's the middle? Like, what what does the middle look like? And that's why Dorogos, Kala, they were born. We need that middle. What does that middle mean, right? And that's, I guess, the part of getting people jobs. Can we get people jobs in Bitcoin and Lightning, can that happen? And I think that's why it's so important to me. Uh, and for example, I don't know if you know this, and I think we have a connection here, but I used to represent an international Grammy award winning orchestra. And wow. they, they were also that funnel, the middle of the funnel between getting a job at a, you know, a, the Philharmonic of, of, of New York or, or in Germany or wherever, um, that this this orchestra from 35 x countries with 80 musicians that would you know compete each year for a scholarship uh, our job was to get them uh, like that opportunity ha have donors to help them and but then there's like these music programs in the countries because imagine the the violin hasn't changed in a hundred years and one conductor can train a hundred students so it's like the cheapest way to keep kids busy in a very fragile developing economy, right? So Mexico, Brazil, several countries have these huge programs to train kids. But then what happens? <laughs> you, like, right. you learn and then there's no jobs, there's no transition. So that orchestra itself, the Orchestra of the Americas, was that middle of the funnel. And I love that sweet spot of the middle because I'm not a developer, I'm not technical, but I do believe in talent, right? So my, my focus is emerging markets, talent, finding talent where you don't believe it exists, right? You're like, well, where, where, are, the, where are the people? And, and you go and find them. Like, you just got to go look. That's it. It's, it's, it's not that they're not there. It's that, that nobody said, hey, pull you out and say, hey, you should do this. You can do this. And, and, and you know, I guess, like, help them believe that there's bigger dreams to be had, I guess, it, yeah, yourself like, included. You know, I, I think that's why I did these projects because while I'm getting jobs, I also needed to show to the community that I was contributing and building, you know, important projects and not just waiting for jobs to fall in my lap. Like Bitcoin right. is not like that. They don't, they're not like waiting to find you. You got to show that you're there. And I think yeah. that's important for anybody in the space. Like, don't wait for these projects to arrive. Go find what's missing. Go find those gaps and fill them. Show that you can create content and build and and add value. And then people will call you and say, hey, Marina, you're the orchestra conductor. You're amazing. You make chaos into order. You know, that's how people pay attention to you. I love it. And, and you are. You're definitely... Again, it's the tangibility, and you, I love how you explained it with the the music training because it's one thing like, yay, now I'm trained and I'm an excellent violinist. What do I do? Like, there's it, it, it's one thing if you're just a hobbyist and this is all I'm doing for fun. It's another of like, this is something I want to do for my career, my passion, and moving forward. And if there's not there's some steps that you know, like there is a bridge and I can move forward and I actually have hope and possibilities to, to have a tangible way to support myself and my dreams and family. Like that's, you are filling such a huge role, like huge. And I just really applaud you <laughs> and thank you. Cause that's, it, there is a lot of hypey talk stuff out there. And it's like, you, you're the dot connector, you know, this bridge of, of, 
the future and the future of money and the future of hope and possibility for for and these talent, young folks and, and talent. And I mean, I bet it feels good, you know, for you to be seen and, you know, for you to get to see these other people and their talent, I bet it makes them feel really uh, happy to know that somebody sees them and actually wants to do something again that that's that's tangible for them to help them, you know, like- I- you know, I don't know if I help them, but I do say, I, I guess what happens is like, I remember with the group with women leaders where I, I spoke to a few women that I recruited, one of the, one of them became the head of the entrepreneur association of her country, right? Wow. Like this is like, well, she's not there yet. Like X, Y, Z, we don't. And then, I mean, and then another one was top 10 women VC in South America, right? Like, we like and 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 my my goal was just talking to people seeing people understanding their their passion drive what makes them do what they do and then having 30 minutes to decide whether to recruit them or not <laughs> and that wow. was pretty challenging because obviously I, I would go to brazil and have like a three-day like interview meet people blah blah blah, blah, blah make decisions quickly um and if you ask me like what made me think somebody should be recruited? I was it just going to really, ask you. That. <laughs> it, it was really when you push them on something that they that they're convinced about, or if you ask them something that like maybe they don't agree on. Like, how do they not agree with you? Are they like curious? Are they are do they like being challenged? Or do they want you to be like, what are you talking about? Like, no, of course not. You know, how they behave to to the debate, right? I think to me, if somebody is curious and they're hungry for knowledge and hungry for your opinion, because I may not be, again, a developer, but I ask enough questions about their journey that they feel that I care about their success and I care about where they're going and, and who I can connect them with or where, who, or like, I care about them. Yeah. And that was a big difference and seeing them succeed that way. Like it wasn't about me, they would have succeeded without me, but, but it still, I think was interesting to be seen maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then with this team too, like we have never met, I've never been to El Salvador. I've never met these people in person. They have, they just met. They like are finally meeting in person themselves with the team that's local. Right. So it's incredible how much we can do thanks to technology and it's, but it's exciting and, and, you know, so empowering. It is. It's so empowering and inspirational, you know, for those of us, what, what would you tell people who want to, start getting involved in learning how to get a Bitcoin job for their, you know, if they're committed to Bitcoin and they're like, I want to go and they maybe aren't necessarily interested in coding. Like, what would you say to somebody like that? I think the days are changing, right? Like I remember applying to Lightning Labs when there were just 12 employees and like I came highly recommended, highly recommended uh, from one of my like very big superstar CEOs that knew me and loved Bitcoin but they weren't hiring unless so a business development person, like who is this person who studied public policy? Uh, and I think that the times have changed. There are other jobs like in, in um, business development or in communications or in project management, HR, uh, just even like community management or, you know, what is lightning in Latin America? What does it mean? What and, and people love lightning in Latin America, by the way. I think it's going to be even more popular than our Bitcoin course, obviously, because nice. it's so exciting. Uh, you know what's what what the possibilities are. So I think that those jobs are changing, right? And definitely go to you know Bitcoinerjobs.com and places mm-hmm. like that where where there's opportunities, but also show up to BitDevs New York or BitDevs Miami or BitDevs whatever in Colorado wherever you are, Denver, uh, and just show up and listen and, and, and make, take a chain code labs course, take a course where you're really reading because you think, you know, and then you realize what, like, I don't know what is SegWit. Well, now I do, right? <laughs> what is right? And, you know, like you really, really, really have to do the homework. And there's a lot of reading. Um, 
but you come out a different person. Like you now understand, as I said, 80, 80, 85% of what they're talking about. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that is amazing. What what do you see in the next five to 10 years? What do you see happening in this, this entire space? And the, you mean the macro, you want me to have but, a crystal ball? <laughs> well, you know, certainly not like a price prediction or anything like that. But like, do you think that we're on track for a lot of the other countries to start adopting the what El Salvador has done? I think that they're going to have their own ways of doing it. Um, mm-hmm. But I do think that this is coming to more countries. Mm-hmm. Um Yes, and I hope in the U.S. we're more open about it, right? And that we have these champions uh, in government and thankfully women who are awesome Mm -hmm. uh, that are really thinking about this uh, more thoughtfully and engaging with other uh, government officials and trying to make sure that we are not boxed in, right? It's too early to be boxed in. So it's really important that we still give it uh, a space to grow and and uh, you know I, I I don't know I don't think I have it here yes I do uh, I'm gonna show it to you in a second I have to show you my little thing and it, uh, you can, can you read it oh girl I want one of those <laughs> <laughs> my heart is open source oh that's the, beautiful this came after a, a a talk that I gave and we were talking about like open and closed technology, right? And why it's so important. And in fact, I just bought myself these two books because I'm obsessed with the topic now. And so, uh, but my goal was exactly, uh, by the way, one of them is by a female, Nadia Iqbal, um, the making and maintenance of open source software. Right. And yeah. And so like, I really believe the world is open source and should be open source. So that Mm -hmm. anybody from any country can learn and and build themselves if they want to. Um, Now, ask me to explain that to my husband, right? Then he's like, what is that? (laughs) But but in the context of my work, it's perfectly rational. And that is where my heart is. I believe in open source. That's why I love Bitcoin. Oh, I love it. What a great great way to (laughs) wrap this up. up. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like... That that's super. That's a whole nother conversation. Is just open source <laughs> development. I mean, I'm I'm still learning about these concepts and and why it's so important, why it matters, and how to start slowly getting off of. I mean, right now we're broadcasting. I'm using Chrome because that's how the software works. Is I have to be you know utilizing it. So I'm like, I'm really excited to keep learning. Like I inter- start nine labs has got, you know, this decentralized servers where you can run your node and then start hosting your own data. And then there's all these different things to learn about um, with like the matrix protocol. Do you know what that is? No. So I guess I'm still learning. The, I guess there's this matrix open source protocol where it will help link in all these different other um apps and things that are open source. And then, so you can start, you know, developing, you know, the new internet that's not, you know, run by Google and everything. And so it's really fast. And again, I I hope I'm not mutilating these things. I'm just within the last 72 hours learning. We're all learning. We're all learning. Oh my gosh. And so, um, but it's important, you know, and, but it's like just step by step, not getting overwhelmed and feeling like, I don't know enough, so why bother? And I'm never going to catch up. It's like, it's not about catching up. It's about just being on the journey, you know, like start where you're at and everything. So, okay. One more question. What, you know, I can't play a lot of music on the podcast here because we do live and we'll get shut down by all the platforms. So, so what's your favorite jam to get you in a, you know, we did the yawn exercise before we pushed <laughs> live here. What's your favorite music to get you like high vibe and, and ready to rock the world? So it's called Patria y Viva. Uh, it's pa- country I- and life. Ooh. And it is by a, a group of Cuban singers. And it was a, a cry of freedom, if you will, that even the human rights uh, organization have been, have been saying that the government wants to shut down this song. And it is uh, one of the key writers of this uh, song is um, Orish, one of the original singers of Orisha, which is also one of my favorite bands. They're Cuban. They, I love them. They have like the old style Cuban music, plus the rap, plus the hip hop. 
Like it's a very cool combination of both. And so Patria y Viva. Patria y Viva. Okay. Yes. Okay, Viva. Viva Life. Vida. Uh, country and Life. Patria y Vida. Country. Patria it y Vida. And okay. if you can get the lyrics in English, it's just so beautiful. It talks about freedom and the end of dictatorship and, and having hope for the future, if you will. And it's yeah. very danceable. <laughs> it is very danceable. That's also yes. a good, important thing. Okay. Oh, this is great. I'm going to look those up. I'll put them in the show notes. So, okay. So um, everybody, you guys can find Marina Spindler at marinaspindler.com. At Twitter, you're also Marina Spindler. Are you yes. on the other platforms where people should go, go out and look for you? Those are the basics. That's the best. To- awesome. And so, um, and so everybody else you. to go to, yeah, totally. You can go to djvaleriebelove.com. I'll have all the show notes there. You can grab a free playlist that I've made of my high vibe songs because I love music. <laughs> and then also you guys go out to, if you want to learn about Bitcoin, um, Gigi's got a really great website called bitcoin-resources.com. And he's actually looking for a maintainer of the website too. So if we know anybody out there who would be interested in helping, uh, you know, curate the best content and the best resources out there you know get a hold get a hold of his GG. article of, of time bitcoin is time oh my oh, god he's a so genius good. i i love oh him god. i'm just he's such a good i'm just like wow can you imagine the community without him it wouldn't be as, as you know, i mean <laughs> I, you know each fan. of us yeah each I'm of us i fan. think we're all yeah we're all adding that so so go check that out and he needs that support and obviously you guys can uh, you can follow me at DJ Valerie B Love all over the 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 interwebs, um, but yeah, thank let's, you, let's yeah, thank you so much, Marina. How about everybody? Let's take a quick deep breath together. And as we're listening to this, if you're listening to this in your car or at work, whatever, just remember like we have our breath accessible all the time, and if we get to remember to connect to it, we can remember our power, and we always have another uh, opportunity to to change our mood and our vibes you know, just as we inhale together. (sighs) Yeah. And Marina Spindler, thank you. This is, I I could go on for hours. There's so many points that we could talk about. So I'd love to have you back again and I would love to celebrate your progress. Thank you for finding me on Twitter, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. When I heard you on Cafe Bitcoin, I was just like, oh, oh, I want to meet you. I mean, I I reached out (laughs) to you instantly. So I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. And go check out Torogos.dev because we launched today. Awesome. Torogos.dev. And then we're going to be following up with you guys and see how everything's going for sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay, everybody. Have a great day. Again, this is DJ Valerie. Be love with the Bitcoin Peace and Music Podcast. Aloha, everybody. Bye. <laughs>